As new creation believers, we must learn how to work the principles of the kingdom of God to overcome life's toughest challenges. In this comprehensive teaching, Bishop McClendon explains how Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who will provide, is not only one of God's redemptive names, it is also a place. Jehovah Jireh is a place. It is a name for God, but it is also a place in God. By understanding the mechanics of this principle, you will be able to tap into God's provision like never before. There are people I'm sent to that in the next 30 days or so, you are going to have an encounter with Jehovah Jireh that is going to change you, your life, and everything that comes after this forever. Don't miss this opportunity to overturn lack and frustration in your life. Download this powerful teaching from our digital store and get ready to enter the place of Jehovah Jireh today. Become a digital disciple of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word teaches that great grace comes with the boldness of spreading the gospel. You can find our YouTube channel by simply typing in on your search engine and there on your screen, the message of grace and truth will be on demand. Will you have the boldness to subscribe and share? Be bold and share the message of the cross with your network. Our children are under attack by a satanic assault in the areas of sexual identity and immorality right under our noses. Sneaky politics and brazen perversion in education are aggressively indoctrinating our youth to reject godly principles. There's a lot of people who think they're something because the spirit that entered them as children has been expressing itself through them uninterrupted by anyone with spiritual discernment or knowledge or authority. In this searing prophetic encounter, Bishop McClendon exposes these deceptive tactics. Yet it is up to us to police the atmosphere and use our authority in Christ Jesus to destroy them. It's not about your political affiliation. It's about lifting the darkness off of a generation. For our sons and daughters will prophesy and glorify the living God.
As new creation believers, we must learn how to work the principles of the kingdom of God to overcome life's toughest challenges. In this comprehensive teaching, Bishop McClendon explains how Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who will provide, is not only one of God's redemptive names, it is also a place. Jehovah Jireh is a place. It is a name for God, but it is also a place in God. By understanding the mechanics of this principle, you will be able to tap into God's provision like never before. There are people I'm sent to that in the next 30 days or so, you are going to have an encounter with Jehovah Jireh that is going to change you, your life, and everything that comes after this forever. Don't miss this opportunity to overturn lack and frustration in your life. Download this powerful teaching from our digital store and get ready to enter the place of Jehovah Jireh today. Become a digital disciple of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word teaches that great grace comes with the boldness of spreading the gospel. You can find our YouTube channel by simply typing in on your search engine and there on your screen, the message of grace and truth will be on demand. Will you have the boldness to subscribe and share? Be bold and share the message of the cross with your network. Our children are under attack by a satanic assault in the areas of sexual identity and immorality right under our noses. Sneaky politics and brazen perversion in education are aggressively indoctrinating our youth to reject godly principles. There's a lot of people who think they're something because the spirit that entered them as children has been expressing itself through them uninterrupted by anyone with spiritual discernment or knowledge or authority. In this searing prophetic encounter, Bishop McClendon exposes these deceptive tactics. Yet it is up to us to police the atmosphere and use our authority in Christ Jesus to destroy them. It's not about your political affiliation. It's about lifting the darkness off of a generation. For our sons and daughters will prophesy and glorify the living God.
As new creation believers, we must learn how to work the principles of the kingdom of God to overcome life's toughest challenges. In this comprehensive teaching, Bishop McClendon explains how Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who will provide, is not only one of God's redemptive names, it is also a place. Jehovah Jireh is a place. It is a name for God, but it is also a place in God. By understanding the mechanics of this principle, you will be able to tap into God's provision like never before. There are people I'm sent to that in the next 30 days or so, you are going to have an encounter with Jehovah Jireh that is going to change you, your life, and everything that comes after this forever. Don't miss this opportunity to overturn lack and frustration in your life. Download this powerful teaching from our digital store and get ready to enter the place Jehovah Jireh today. Become a digital disciple of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word teaches that great grace comes with the boldness of spreading the gospel. You can find our YouTube channel by simply typing in on your search engine and there on your screen, the message of grace and truth will be on demand. Will you have the boldness to subscribe and share? Be bold and share the message of the cross with your network. Our children are under attack by a satanic assault in the areas of sexual identity and immorality right under our noses. Sneaky politics and brazen perversion in education are aggressively indoctrinating our youth to reject godly principles. There's a lot of people who think they're something because the spirit that entered them as children has been expressing itself through them uninterrupted by anyone with spiritual discernment or knowledge of authority. In this searing prophetic encounter, Bishop McClendon exposes these deceptive tactics. Yet it is up to us to police the atmosphere and use our authority in Christ Jesus to destroy them. It's not about your political affiliation. It's about lifting the darkness off of a generation for our sons and daughters will prophesy and glorify the living God.
God sends men and women for purposes and messages, and the prophet Bishop Clarence C. McLennan was sent with the apostolic and prophetic assignment of being called to the nations with a message. The apostolic and prophetic assignment of Bishop McClendon takes place through regular weekly worship experiences and periodic prophetic encounters of consecutive nights of revelatory teaching, as well as global conferences and crusades. Clarence McClendon Ministries and the Place of Grace are stewarding the apostolic and prophetic call placed upon it by the Father. We are covering the globe with the grace of God, the healing grace of Jesus of Nazareth, and taking the message of the finished work of Jesus to the nations. A mandate of this assignment is the Academy of Healing and Wellness, which teaches the healing grace of Jesus and includes the instruction of the healing of bodies, lands, and nations, and is broadcast live across the globe. The central nucleus and headquarters for the assignment of the prophet is the Place of Grace Cosmopolitan Center. Place of Grace Cosmopolitan Center, a learning, training, and sending out center, will be a television-ready studio where content can be captured, produced, and sent out worldwide. Ministry programs like the Alpha Care Program and the Kingdom Life Curriculum, designed to help the sons of God and the systems of the world become effective children of the Kingdom. Weekly and holiday ministry food outreaches to the less fortunate in the Los Angeles area, with the Cosmopolitan Center functioning as the headquarters, is an ongoing commitment. Bishop Clarence C. McClendon and the Place of Grace is not a physical location, but a spiritual destination. Become a partner with us today. Become a digital disciple of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word teaches that great grace comes with the boldness of spreading the gospel. You can find our YouTube channel by simply typing in on your search engine. And there on your screen, the message of grace and truth will be on demand. Will you have the boldness to subscribe and share? Be bold and share the message of the cross with your network. Our children are under attack by a satanic assault in the areas of sexual identity and immorality right under our noses. Sneaky politics and brazen perversion in education are aggressively indoctrinating our youth to reject godly principles. There's a lot of people who think they're something because the spirit that entered them as children has been expressing itself through them uninterrupted by anyone with spiritual discernment or knowledge or authority. In this searing prophetic encounter, Bishop McClendon exposes these deceptive tactics. Yet it is up to us to police the atmosphere and use our authority in Christ Jesus to destroy them. It's not about your political affiliation. 
It's about lifting the darkness off of a generation, for our sons and daughters will prophesy and glorify the living God. God sends men and women for purposes and messages, and the prophet Bishop Clarence McLennan was sent with the apostolic and prophetic assignment of being called to the nations with a message. The apostolic and prophetic assignment of Bishop McLennan takes place through regular weekly worship experiences and periodic prophetic encounters of consecutive nights of revelatory teaching, as well as global conferences and crusades. Clarency McLennan Ministries and the Place of Grace are stewarding the apostolic and prophetic call placed upon it by the Father. We are covering the globe with the grace of God, the healing grace of Jesus of Nazareth, and taking the message of the finished work of Jesus to the nations. A mandate of this assignment is the Academy of Healing and Wellness, which teaches the healing grace of Jesus and includes the instruction of the healing of bodies, lands, and nations, and is broadcast live across the globe. The central nucleus and headquarters for the assignment of the prophet is the Place of Grace Cosmopolitan Center. Place of Grace Cosmopolitan Center, a learning, training, and sending out center, will be a television-ready studio where content can be captured, produced, and sent out worldwide. Ministry programs like the Alpha Care Program and the Kingdom Life Curriculum, designed to help the sons of God and the systems of the world become effective children of the kingdom. Weekly and holiday ministry food outreaches to the less fortunate in the Los Angeles area with the Cosmopolitan Center functioning as the headquarters is an ongoing commitment. Clarence C. McLennan and the Place of Grace is not a physical location, but a spiritual destination. Become a partner with us today. And there you are, and here I am, and I know that you have been waiting for me. You have my apologies for being just a few minutes late, but, you know, if you live in L.A., uh, you know, sometimes the traffic here can be so bad that it'll take 20 minutes to get someplace one day and, and an hour and a half the next. And so uh, this particular day with what I got up and did this morning in prayer and meditation and getting ready when I got ready to come to the studio, I don't know, something was happening uh, on the freeway, but here I am am. And so tell everybody the prophet is on live. I'm still going to give you an hour, the eyes of the watchman. And so I'm going to go 1230 Pacific Standard Time. That's what time it is here to 130. And I pray that you will stay there and be with me. So tell somebody right now the prophet is on live. The eyes of the watchman is on. The eyes have made it to the studio. And I want to make sure that as you come on, I shout you out. There's Judy watching from Texas. Donna June Hicks watching from Dallas. God bless you, Donna. Let me know as you're coming on. Deborah Johnson, blessing you from Bakersfield, California. Well, there's one of my California uh, uh, colleagues. God bless you for coming on and being with us today. Betty from Steele, Missouri. God bless you, Betty. Betty Henry. Nikki, greetings, Bishop, watching you from Cape Town, South Africa. There's my South African delegation. Amen. God bless you. I'm believing for healing this evening. Well, we're going to pray that God would manifest that in your life 
the finished work of Jesus afternoon watching from New Jersey. Marcia it, Cook is coming on. As you continue to come on, I want you to, to, to let me know where you're coming on from uh, and shout me out here as we get ready to proceed now with the eyes of the watch. Well, let me see. Let me see who else is sharing with us. Text somebody now. Call them. Let them know. Uh, Jeremiah watching from South Haven, Mississippi. Hallelujah. Praise God. I haven't been to Mississippi in some time, but uh, enjoy preaching and ministering down there. Daisy watching from New York. Yeah, New York. Stand up, New York. Love New York. Oh, my goodness. What a great, great place uh, that is. Blessings from Palm Beach, Florida. Well, you know, now, Denise, that's not a bad place either. Uh, you know, hanging out in Palm Beach, you could do much worse, yea, I say unto thee, than this. I want you to make sure that you, uh, as you come on, that you shout me out, let me know where you're coming on from. Again, tell somebody right now that the eyes of the watchman is on, the prophet is on live, and I want to encourage you as you connect today to stay connected with us here in this anointing. See, this is about the anointing of God. And uh, one of the things the Spirit of Grace said to me several years ago when uh, he let me know that things like this I would be doing, he said, there's some things that I'm just going to start sharing with you, and you're not going to be able to wait to get to a pulpit or to an invitation or even to your own ministry. You're going to have to come on and share it with the people. As a matter of fact, it's just so interesting uh, the Lord said something to me just a few days ago before this thing hit in the Congress um, about uh, about the Israel Hamas war. Told me I needed to say something about that. I wrote it down, and the, the two days after I wrote it down, you know, Chuck Schumer in the Congress here says something. Um, uh, President Biden is uh, chastising. Benjamin Netanyahu to some degree. And there are some things here that as new creations in Christ Jesus, you and I need to understand. And so I was asking the Lord, should I deal with that? He said, not yet, um, but I'm going to deal with it. But it came to me before this stuff hit. So as you come on, I want you to understand that there are things the spirit of God is giving us to share uh, that I believe are strategic for the time and season. So I want to encourage you as you're connecting even today, to join the Prophetic E community, join our PEC. At, uh, you can go to bishopmcclendon.com. doesn't cost you anything to join the PEC. But as I often say, even though uh, connection is free, uh, the connection, I believe, will become invaluable to you because there is nothing, no commodity, no price that can be put on the word of God, the rhema of God as it comes to you. So if you haven't become a part of the PEC, join today. Go to bishopmcclennan.com, just sign up. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, if you uh, have not downloaded the Bishop McClendon app, I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to go to Google or iTunes, download the app. Uh, there are some things that... Uh, I'm going to be addressing even with the app to keep you even more engaged and more updated. And don't forget also to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Let me see who's coming on. Let me see who else is coming on as people continue to come on. Let me see uh, who is coming. Also, uh, let me uh, just remind you to like and share the video. Don't forget, as we are on uh, live, you can send your prayer requests and your testimonies, your comments, and your questions. Here's Juanita Wesson from Windsor, North Carolina. God bless you. Jeremy Leslie from Nashville, Tennessee. God bless you. Jeremy, looks like there's somebody behind you there. Okay. Jeremy Leslie coming on from Nashville. God bless you. Who else? I've got Miranda, Colorado Springs. Colorado Springs. I used to, I had a an uncle of mine that used to pastor, one of my dad's brothers pastored in Colorado. I want to encourage you also and make sure that you are uh, connecting with us in every way that you can, because I also want to make sure that I'm getting an opportunity to get your questions and respond to them. Uh, I'm still looking at how to 
receive the questions and set aside time uh, to respond to them with regularity. Uh, but don't forget, don't forget uh, that your prayer requests are important. And I want to make sure that your prayer requests are received and responded to you. You can go to the prophet's prayer room at bishopmcclennan.com and do it in that way. Uh, or you can send them to us at contact us, contact us at bishopmcclennan.com. The moment you send your prayer requests to us, uh, my prayer intercessors, my team begins to pray. We take your prayer request and for at least 30 days, I assure you, you are going to be prayed over a prayer that God will answer. How do you know that? Because we're going to pray the word of God and the Bible says all of the promises are in him. Yes. And in him, amen to the glory of God. So get your prayer request into us and make sure that you connect with us in that way. Now, listen, I want you to go back with me to Genesis 22. As I've said to you, um, time uh, and time again, as I come here to the eyes of of the watchman that this is not ordained to be a Bible study, although we are looking into the word of God and commenting and making commentary on times and seasons, both in the spirit and in the natural. As I have been sharing these last uh, several days, I've been dealing with what the spirit of the Lord is addressing me to share with his people concerning uh, his plans and purposes for his church, for his remnant church, for the ecclesia. Uh, in this time and in this season to prosper and increase us. And again, you know, when guys like me, preachers of the gospel, when we start talking about the blessing of God, the prosperity of God coming up on the lives of God's people, everyone thinks that we're, you know, trying to raise money or this or that or the other thing uh, for our own aggrandizement or whatever. You know, I, I'm so far beyond dealing with that kind of uh, imbecilic idiocy that I don't even respond to that because I know what God's word says. Uh, you know, the scripture is clear. Deuteronomy 8.18, that you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he that gives you the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant in the earth as it is this day. That's Deuteronomy 8, 18. God gives you the power to get well. Now, if God doesn't want his people prospering, why would he give us power to get well? Third John 2, he says, beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper in be and be in health even as your soul prospers. It's very interesting to me. The whole world goes to work to prosper and somehow, when it comes to thinking God wants that for us, we, we, we start tripping. No. And one of the things that I've shared with you is that in this last day, in this end time harvest, as I showed you in Luke chapter number five, the prosperity of God is going to be one of the greatest evangelism tools in the hands of the people of God. I'm going to say that again. The prosperity of God is going to be one of the greatest evangelism tools uh, in the arsenal of the people of God. You say, where do you get that? How can you say that? Because I can read. It's in Luke chapter five, when Jesus blesses Peter's business with abundance, when he delivers him from failure and prospers him abundantly, it's there that Peter falls to his knees and says, depart from me, O Lord, for I am a sinful man. The prosperity, the miraculous abundance of God caused Peter to fall to his knees and repent. And this is why the enemy doesn't want you and I to know God's plan. See, God's mind on the matter. See, he said, my thoughts aren't, I don't think about stuff the way you think about it. And here's something you've got to understand, that worldly people, People who are not born from above, people who are not new creations in Christ Jesus are not going to think about prosperity the way, do, the way you do. They're not going to think about your prosperity the way you do. They're going to think of your and my prosperity the way they do. 
because they are in pursuit of wealth. Jesus said, these are the things that Gentiles seek after all. He, are you there? He said, these are the things that Gentiles, that means people without covenant. Doesn't just mean non-Jew. It means people without a covenant. People without a covenant with God are seeking these things. But Jesus said, if you seek first my kingdom, the advancement of my kingdom, and that's not just evangelism. It's seeking the rule of God, the realm of God, and the royalty of God manifesting in the earth. He said, if you seek first, all these things the Gentiles are seeking will be added to you. What does that mean? You'll receive them without pursuing them. And I've said this before, in the kingdom of God, you never get anything by pursuing it. In the kingdom of God, you get everything by pursuing him. Did you hear what I just said? In the kingdom of God, you get nothing by pursuing it. In the kingdom of God, you get everything in this kingdom by pursuing him. That's why he said, if you seek first my kingdom, this other stuff that Gentiles are fighting over, wrestling over, sleeping with each other to try to get stabbing each other in the back and lying on each other in order to get a leg up. He said, I will elevate you without that because you're seeking me first. So we've been looking at God's plan, God's purpose to bring you and I to the place Jehovah Jireh. And we established the fact that Jehovah Jireh is not just a name for God. It is a place in God. I'm going to say it again. Jehovah Jireh is not just a name for God. It is a place in God. And as I'm talking to you, the spirit of God just, he just said to me, go back and make sure you make this clear. I said something just now that is very key and very significant. I want you to get this. And that is that people in the world and people with unrenewed minds, even Christians, see, because Every Christian doesn't have a renewed mind. Every Christian uh, does not have spiritual understanding. Paul said, I pray for you that you be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. There's a lot of Christians. They're born again, yes. They're saved, yes. They'll be in heaven, yes. But their thinking is carnal and their understanding is carnal. They do not have spiritual understanding. In other words, they are not looking at things through the lens of the mind and the word of God. They're looking at things still through the lens of the natural mind. And you've got to understand this. I don't know why I'm saying this, but the Spirit of the Lord just said, back up and say this again. That people, especially worldly people, people who are not born from above, they are not new creations in Christ Jesus, they will always attribute to you and to me their motives for prosperity. See, their motives are to get a bigger house, get a bigger car, be the man, be the woman, be, you know, pimpalicious or whatever it is that they do to floss. No, 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 no. See, the prosperity of God is not just so you can be looked at. It's so your father can be glorified. It's not just so you can be blessed. It's so you and I can not only be blessed, but be a blessing and this, uh, this is where God wants to increase you, not just in you being blessed, but in you being a blessing. There is a place in God where the increase of God begins to come to you, not just for you, but because God knows he can trust you as a distribution center to get things where he wants them to go. Now, that's part of what it means to get to the place Jehovah Jireh. Go once again to Genesis chapter 22. Marsha, thanks for making it clear, Bishop. I'm doing the very best I can, Marsha, because I want at least I want every impediment in your mind and your emotions out of the way to of God's prosperity. See, a, see, in a lot of Christians, it's their minds and their wills and their emotions that are keeping them from the abundance that is already deposited within them. Huh. See, the kingdom is within you. Watch now, Genesis 22, verse number one. I'm going to read again. It says, and it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, he said, here I am. 
Then he said, take now your son. I read this yesterday, so I'm not going to make much comment. Your only son whom you love and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So you know the story. Abraham goes, does it. He's getting ready to sacrifice his son, going down to verse number nine. It says, then they came to the place of which God had told him. And Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar up on the wood. You know, Isaac had to think his daddy had lost his mind. I, I just can't imagine. Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. You know what? I, I, as I'm reading that, I'm hearing the voice of one of my uh, spiritual mentors in the, in the spirit of revelation, Dr. Mark Hanby. And one of the things he said, he said, most Christians would have killed Isaac because God said so. <laughs> I love that. Most Christians would have killed Isaac because God said so. This is the significance of hearing the preceding word of God, of staying tuned in to what the Spirit of God says. See, because you can hear something, and then God can say something else as you move along in progressive revelation with him. There are some of you, thank you, Lord, there are some of you that are listening to me right now, that the Spirit of the Lord is going to take you to a dimension of instruction that you didn't even think you would be able to hear. It's going to come to you. Uh, but I, I just remember recently, he said, most Christians would have killed Isaac because they can't keep hearing the voice of God. They hear one thing and they set out and they don't understand that God is constantly speking and constantly drinking. Did you hear what I just said? And he, and he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him for now I know. And again, that, that now I know there means now I can be involved. Now through the action of your faith, you have released me to get involved. That word know there literally means to ascertain by seeing, to be able to act now by reason of action. See, faith is always something that can be seen or heard. It is not faith until it can be seen or heard. Until it can be seen or heard, it is just believing. Do, did you hear what I just said? Uh, see, it, 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 well, let me, let me put it even better than that. Until it can be seen or heard, it is just a conviction or a persuasion. When it can be seen or heard, that's when it becomes faith. And this is what a lot of Christians don't understand. Well, say, well, I'm believing God. Well, the Bible says the demons believe. So believing is not enough to get a thing done. It takes faith. And faith is not faith until it can be seen or heard, until you say something and or act. And usually uh, for a manifestation, both are required. I'm not teaching on faith today, but that's important. So, so uh, now this is important for where I'm going to get to, for where we've got to get to today. Because God said, uh, now I know meaning, now I can get involved. I'm now released to get involved because you acted on my word. Look at verse 13. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him, there behind him, say it again, there behind him, there behind him, there behind him. I said this yesterday, that means that Abraham would either pass this by and his eyes had been hidden from the provision that was already there. Mm. That's a word for someone. <laughs> Your eyes are about to be opened to the provision that is already there. See, remember this. The, your miracle always begins with something you have in your house or in your hand. Did you hear what I just said? Your miracle always begins with something you have in your house, meaning in, in under your authority or in your hand. God said to Moses, when he said, what do you have in your hand? Uh, when, he, when Elijah came to the widow woman, he said, what do you have in the house? See, your miracle always begins. God will never leave you without something 
to initiate the miracle you need. And that's why even if it seems insignificant to you, you have to understand it is significant to God because it's where he's going to begin your miracle breakthrough. That's why like when Jesus got the five loaves and two fish, the Bible says in John 6, he said, make the people sit down. Why? Because he had enough to get a miracle started. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm telling somebody under the anointing of the spirit of grace, you've got enough to get your miracle started. You've got enough to get to the place Jehovah Jireh if you'll just act on a word from God. Selena said, thanks, man of God. I need to hear that word. Selena, we all need to hear it and we need to keep hearing it because God is progressively taking us to a place, the place Jehovah Jireh. Watch this. It said, Abraham lifted his eyes and there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns, which again means that either Abraham had passed this by and not seen it. And once he performed his act of believing. Thank you, master. Wow, I feel the anointing of God. Abraham had passed this by and not seen it. And once he began his act, once he finished his act of believing, his eyes were open to the provision of God. Either that happened, because the Bible says it was behind him. So he had to, he had to look behind him. He had passed it. So either it was there and he didn't see it, or his Act of believing caused a supernatural manifestation and something that wasn't there showed up there. I'm believing God for some of you. Hallelujah. That, ooh, whoo, oh, there's the anointing of God. I'm believing God for many of you that something that wasn't there yesterday, wasn't there last week wasn't there a few days ago shows up and manifests in your life, in your bank account, in your circumstance, in your situation. You know, God can put money in a bank account. I'm just telling you, especially now when all it is, is digits, he can cause the digits to move. Somebody watching me right now is going to have money show up in your bank account. You write me when it happens. I'm telling you by the word of the Lord. I'm not just talking right now. When I just said that, the spirit of the Lord said, decree it. Somebody watching me right now is going to see supernatural, a supernatural deposit of finance. I had no intention of saying that when I came on the air. I just heard it. Somebody is going to act and God's going to put something where it wasn't. <laughs> Whoo. Uh, did I not say to you that I'm the God for whom nothing is impossible? Did I not say to you that with me all things are possible? And the new creation is never without me, says the Lord. Did I not tell you that I was not only with you, but I would be in you? And my being with you never negates my being in you. And my being in you never negates my being with you. I am with you and I am where you are not, says the Lord, working on your behalf. I have shown you in my word, even with Peter, and the coin in the fish's mouth that I can put something where it isn't or where it shouldn't be. I am the Lord for whom nothing is too difficult, says the spirit of the Lord. Now, th th that, that, was, that was just a prophetic word that came up out of my spirit for someone because that prophetic anointing is being stirred. Are you there? Are you there? Now, I don't know who this is for, but there will be a testimony coming in the next seven to 10 days about someone who had something placed where it was not. Watch, watch, watch. And there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up 
for a burnt offering instead of his son. Then Abraham called the name of the place. Say that out loud. The name of the place. Yeah. He called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh or the Lord will provide Yad He Vav He Yireh as it is said to this day in the mount at a certain elevation. See, mountains are high places that at a certain place of elevation or revelation uh, in the mount of the Lord at a certain place in God, it shall be provided. <laughs> glory, glory be to God. See, Jehovah Jireh, again, don't get me wrong. I'm not negating the reality that it is one of the covenant names of God. It is. But your Bible, your Bible, your Bible says Abraham, Abraham called the name of the place. And I'll never forget when I read that. And the spirit of the Lord said, son, don't miss this. Jehovah Jireh is a place in me, not just a name for me. It is one of God's characteristics. But there is a place where you get nothing to get. Ah, let me just read because I'm, I'm I, I got to get this to you. And like I said. There's an, I've done an entire teaching on this. You can get it at the digital download store. You can go to the CEMM digital download store. You can get it. And I encourage you to get it all because I go in depth with this. I taught on this three or four nights and it was powerful, the revelation that came forth. I, I don't have that kind of time here, so I've got to get you the highlights and, and I'll go back over it in just a moment. But I want to get to this. Verse 15, watch this. Are you there? See, Abraham is, has just called the name of the place Jehovah Jireh. Now watch this. Verse 15, then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham, Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, by myself, I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing. Now, I, I need you, if you've got a Bible, I need you to focus on that. Because you have done this thing. And have not withheld your son, your only son. Now, that was the thing. Mm. That was the thing. Thank you, Master. That was the thing that God instructed Abraham to do, and he did it. I'll never forget, I was reading this some time ago, and he said, he said, and the Lord said to me, he said, son, this is why Abraham is the father of all, as Romans says, he says, the father of us all in the presence of God. Abraham is the father of faith. He's the father of the Jewish nation and the father of the new creation before God. Are you there? As relates to faith. Why? Because the Lord, I'll never forget when the Lord said this to me. He said, because with Abraham, I found a man. That's why Adam isn't it. Moses isn't it. David isn't Why Abraham? God said, because with Abraham, I found a man in the earth. Watch this. Who was willing to do on earth what I had determined I would do from heaven. And when I found a man who was willing, because see, God said, I was going to give my son. I needed a man who would be willing to do it in the earth so I could manifest it in the earth. Uh, don't have time to get into that. What are you saying? See, whatever you're willing to do in the earth, God will match it from heaven. As a matter of fact, he will do exceeding and abundantly above all you can ask or think. But that is why as you get to the place Jehovah Jireh, it seems to you that God asks you for more. It's not that God is asking you for more. It's that he's ready to release more and he needs someone who will agree with him in the earth. Are you there? He said, don't miss this because I mean, this is one of the things I love about the Bible. The Bible clarifies a whole lot of things. I, I tell people, Oftentimes, you should read the Bible. It sheds a lot of light on the commentaries. <laughs> you want to be able to read the commentaries to shed light on the Bible. No, read the Bible. It'll shed a lot of light on the commentaries. See, the Bible, by the Holy Spirit, 
showing you the word. I tell people all the time. And since you're hanging out with me, you're going to hear it. See, when God gave you the Holy Spirit, he gave you the author of the book he told you to read. See, the Bible says men of God wrote as they were moved on by the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. He authored it. There were different penmen, but one author. Yeah, tell your college professor that. There were different penmen, but one author. The Holy Spirit is the author. And the Bible says men of God wrote as they were moved on by the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. And so when when Jesus gave you and I the Holy Spirit, he actually gave us the author of the book that we read. I was in my early 20s and I had learned to study with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I learned how to study with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, and the Lord taught me that study is not a monologue, it's a dialogue, it's a conversation with the author. And the, I'll never forget when the Lord said to me, he said, son, no one knows what they meant when they wrote what they wrote like the author. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? See, no one knows what they mean when they write what they write like the author. If you could sit down and talk to Shakespeare, if you could sit down and talk to Hemingway, if you could sit down and talk to J.D. Salinger, if you could sit down and talk to some of these great authors and say, you know, what were you thinking when you wrote this? They could not only tell you what the words meant, but what's behind the words. That's what the Holy Spirit will do. He'll not only show you what he wrote, he'll take you behind into what he was thinking when he wrote what he wrote. Now, why am I saying that? Because here... The scripture clearly says that the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time in heaven and said, by myself, I have sworn, says, because you have done this thing, meaning there are certain things that you and I do in obedience to the word and the direction of God in the act of believing that cause us to get to the place Jehovah Jireh. Did, did, did you get what I said? See, there are certain things. There are certain things. Thank you, Master. Okay, about that 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 you do at the word of the Lord. I'm not talking about stuff you just decide to do. I'm a, I'm gonna do this, and God will have no, 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 no. There are certain things that God would instruct you to do, and when you act up on that word, it takes you to a place that other people don't get to in God. Are you there? See, God is no respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of faith and he is a respecter of believing. He's a respecter of faith. And so God says, I want you to see what he says to Abraham because this, this is what it means to be in the place, Jehovah Jireh. He said, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your own son, no, because you did what I directed you to do, that significant thing, and see, that you don't know which thing that God instructs you to do is the one that's going to start breaking stuff open. That's why uh, the writer of Ecclesiastes says, cast your bread upon the water. He says, give a serving to seven and also to eight because you don't know which one will prosper, this one or that. Me, the, every seed will prosper. But what he's meaning there is you don't know which one's going to break you through. You don't know which act of believing is going to cause you to get to a place from which there will never be a retreat and never be a return. I'm talking to some people. There's about 50 or 60 people watching me right now that God is taking you to a place. And there's more than that watching me. There's about 50 or 60 of you watching me right now that God is taking you to a place in this season from which there will be no return. I'm talking about a good place, a place where you'll never come back down to a lower level, a place where you will never lack on the level that you have lacked before, where you will never be in need the way you have been in need. There are some of you, under the sound of my voice, that like Abraham, 
are getting to this place and the spirit of God has sent me to you to prophesy and help prophesy you into it, to encourage you that you are close. Watch it. He says, because you have done this thing and not withheld your son, your only son, watch this, blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply your descendants, hallelujah, as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is on the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. Now, what does this mean? Because the, the, the construction of the words here is so important. God says, blessing, I will bless you. What does that mean? You, you could... You could have just said, well, I'll, I'm going to bless you. Because you've done this, I'm going to bless you. Because you've done this, I'm going to multiply you, Abraham. That's not what the word says. And in the original language, it's, it's a different construction. It, it says, because you've done this thing, blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply your descent. In other words, God is saying this. He said, because you are now in this place, mm, Jehovah Jireh, because you're now in this place with me, I cannot bless and you not be included. I cannot multiply and you not get in on it. Nothing is going to happen good in the earth, in the region that doesn't involve you, that you do not. In other words, when I am moving in a significant and a demonstrative way, my God, I, you will never again be passed over, never again be looked over. See, this puts you in the place, glory to God, that Abraham got in. You remember when God was, um, was, was about to rain down fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah, he said, can I hide from Abraham the thing that I'm getting ready to do? Why? Because this man was in the place, Jehovah Jireh, which is not just about money. It's about knowing that God is the source of everything, not just provision. He's the source of mercy. He's the source of grace. He's the source of release. He's the source of deliverance. He's the source of everything. And Abraham was not into that place, Jehovah John. Are you listening to me? He said, because you have done this thing, this thing, this thing. Now get it. There were several things that Abraham had done to get to this place. But it was this thing that broke him through. Now, I talked about uh, yesterday just a little bit what it took for Abraham to get to that place. We went back to Genesis number 12 where God tells him, get away from your family and away from your kindred. And we said it wasn't because Abraham, God didn't like Abraham's family and kindred. It was because Abraham had just begun walking with God. He had just met this God, Jehovah. Hallelujah. And God was about to download, if you will, or to, or to share with Abraham principles that his family, his friends, his countrymen didn't live by. And God didn't want any interference when he spoke to Abraham. He didn't want anybody in Abraham's ear saying, well, you know, I ain't never heard of them like that. I, I mean, I... Ain't no, ain't no God that would tell you to do that. See, so he said, get away from them. Why? It wasn't because he was penalizing Abraham. And it wasn't because he didn't like Abraham's country, his kindred, or his father's house. It's I am going, I'm going to bring you to a place where you become the avenue of blessing for all those people. And, uh, boy, and if you keep living like them, you will never be able to be a blessing to them. If you keep functioning by the same principles your mom and them function by, you're going to end up like your mom and them. Now, again, nothing against your mom and them. Love your mom. Not saying anything in Jesus' name. What I'm saying is if you and I are going to progress, it's going to take some other information that people before us have had. And God separated Abraham for that reason. Then he begins to reveal some things to Abraham. And, 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 and so the first thing is the action of separation. He separates him for the purpose of revelation. Why? He's going to get some principles into Abraham. We saw yesterday, the first principle he got into Abraham was the principle 
of giving to God. God called it the Mahasra, the tenth in Abraham's, but it, Abraham wasn't thinking about tithing. He was learning from this God that he just met that one of the ways that the blessing operates in the earth is when I offer to him. And that was an instruction that God gave him. So that was a part of Abram's revelation that caused him to be able to get to the place Jehovah Jireh. So you do not get to the place Jehovah Jireh without revelation knowledge, without receiving things that are revealed by the word of God, by the spirit of God to you that help you begin operating on another level. So that's why tithing and offering and prayer and praise and using the name of Jesus and communion and these other weapons that God has given us are key because they are not revealed to everyone. The significance of them is not revealed. But as a new creation in Christ Jesus, they are your and my weapons of our warfare. Are you still here? Are, 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 you, are, you, are you connecting with me? So go now to Genesis 17. Go, go to Genesis 17. Go back there. Because we saw in Genesis 14 yesterday that one of the pieces of revelation that God gives to Abram, Abraham is the tithe. That's a part of of the rep, are you listening? That's a part of the revelation knowledge that gets Abraham to the place of Jehovah Jireh. So the first thing is separation. The second thing is revelation. I'm talking about getting to the place of Jehovah Jireh. First of all, you've got to be willing to endure separation for the purpose of revelation. But then you've got to receive the revelation knowledge from God and from his word. And see, many times God will send you men and women of his, like myself, prophets of God, to bring revelation to you. See, the Bible says, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets. That means those who speak under divine inspiration, and so shall you prosper. And so many times, thank you, Master, one of the reasons that God will send a man or woman of God to you with a word. It's not about the man. It's not about the woman. It's about the revelation knowledge that comes from God to get you to another place. If you understand that, say, I got that, Bishop. Just shout me out right now because I'm about to go a little deeper. Whew. I'm about to go a little deeper. Talk about getting to the place, Jehovah Jireh. And the Spirit of God has assigned me to bring some people into this place of revelation where you will lack nothing you have need of. And if you ever have a shortage, you'll be so sure it'll be supplied that it won't cause you any lack of sleep or rest or anything else. Shout me out. Kevin, I got that, Bishop. Thank you, Kevin. Let me get three more. I got that, Bishop. Tamiko said, I got it. Okay. Mary, I got that, Bishop. Okay. Give me one more. Betty. Okay. I got that, Bishop. I can go on. See, people are connecting with this. Now stay with me. Stay with me. I'm now in Genesis 17. We're talking about getting to the place Jehovah Jireh. The first thing, the first principle was separation. God separated Abraham for the purpose of revelation. He was going to get principles into him by revelation knowledge that Abraham was operating on that the people around him were not operating by because they didn't know the God Abraham knew and hadn't received the inside information. Are you there? I remember years ago, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, son, I give my children inside information. See, in Wall Street, inside information can get you put in prison. In the kingdom, inside information gets you released from every prison. <laughs> yeah! Somebody needs to run right as the old saints, you say, right through here now. Somebody needs to run. See, it, 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 on Wall Street, in the world's economic system, inside information will get you incarcerated. In the kingdom of God, inside information gets us liberated from every yoke, every bondage, everything the enemy tries to put on us, revelation knowledge. Now watch this. So God separated Abraham for the purpose of revelation getting into him principles 
that he would walk by and live by that the other people around him didn't know. Are you there? And he wanted them to get so ingrained in Abraham that even the people said, well, that ain't God. That ain't. No, 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 Abraham knew. No, I know what I heard. That's why when the king of Sodom came in Genesis 14, he said, I, I, I've already lifted my hand to the Lord my God. In other words, God and I have already come into agreement about this. We have made an oath about this, and I'm not moving off of it. Abraham was determined. See, nobody before Abraham ever talked anything about tithing. You never heard about it. The principle was there, but that's another message. He reveals it to Abraham. So look at Genesis 17. I got to hurry. Ah, glory to God. Genesis 17. Now, Genesis 17 is, woo. again, Genesis 17 is before Genesis 22 that we just read. So again, I'm going back now and showing you the steps of getting to the place Jehovah John. This was a this is a very significant one. And remember now, remember, uh, you know, Abraham and God start walking together, Genesis 12. Genesis 14, Abram ties. Genesis 15, God makes cuts covenant and tells uh Abraham he's gonna have a son. Uh, you know, uh, Isaac uh, is going to be that son's name, of course. It's some 25 years or more from the time God tells Abraham that to the time Isaac is born. And in the meantime, Abraham goes into Hagar, uh, Sarah's maidservant, and has a baby with, with her uh, that is named Ishmael. Interestingly enough, as I've said before, that's the cause of the fighting in the Middle East. Abraham's two sons, Isaac and Ishmael, still fighting. Stay with me. Uh, that's another conversation. But I'm in Genesis 17. Mm. Oh, let me just be mindful right there. There's a whole lot I could say, but I'm not going to say it. Go to Genesis 17. Uh, verse number one. It says, when Abraham... When Abram was 90 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am almighty God, El Shaddai. <laughs> the almighty God, the all-powerful God, literally means the all-breasted one, the one from whom you can nurse everything. I am El Shaddai. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abram fell on his face and God talked with him there saying, as for me, God is saying, as for me, Behold, my covenant is with you, and you will be the father of many nations. I want you to see that God says to Abraham, he will be the father of many nations, not just one nation. See, God is not only the father of the Jewish people. He is the father of the Jewish people, that people that he made. But he's the father of other nations as well. And that's another conversation. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. I want you to get this. Whew. Abraham was 75 when God made the promise to he, to him that he and Sarah were going to have a son. Some 24 years later, it hasn't come to pass. So in Genesis 17, God is affirming his covenant with Abraham that he made with him uh, some time ago. And he says, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you. Verse number five, no longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be called Abraham or Abraham, but Abraham. And what God literally did is he put his name in Abraham's name. Elohim, Eloha, Eloha, Elohim. Jehovah, ha. he included his name with Abraham's name because literally he was now saying, you are now Abram of God. <laughs> are you there? Now, again, he said, no longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you a father of many nations. See, Abraham means father of many nations. So God says, I have made you a father of many nations. Now I'm changing your name to father of many 
nations or father of a multitude. He says, I will make you exceedingly grateful. I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you and their generation for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendants after you. Also, I give to you and your descendants after you the land in which you are a stranger, the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. Boy, that's important. And see, the further, I'm going to say this, the further nations, and America included, moves away from the Judeo-Christian ethic and fundamentals, the less people understand or believe Genesis 17, 8, that God has given that land to Abraham and his descendants, but it's, it's his descendants, not just after the flesh, it's his descendants after the faith. <laughs> okay. You don't want to miss that. I'm, I got to get into that, um, but I don't want to, I don't want to get into now. Look at verse 15, verse 15. Then God said to Abram, as for Sariah, your wife, you shall not call her name Sariah, but Sarah shall be her name. So, and I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. See, Sarah, Sarah of God means mother of Nations are literally mother of princes and kings. So watch what happens now. Don't miss this. God comes. I'm talking about getting to the place, Jehovah Jireh. God is getting Abraham to that place. He, he says, now, I made you a promise 24 years ago. Hasn't come to pass as of yet. God comes to Genesis 17 and says, I'm affirming that promise now and I'm, I'm, I'm now going to activate this covenant. And what does he do? He says, I'm going to change your name from Abram to Abraham and I'm going to change your wife's name from Sariah to Secha. Again, it is the inclusion of God's name, Jehovah, Eloha, into their names. So it literally means Abram and Sariah in covenant with God, but their name, it signifies Abram and Sariah in covenant with God, but the names mean something. Abraham means father of many nations. Sarah means mother of princes and kings. So what God does when he changes their name, don't miss this. God puts his word in their mouths. Did you get what I just said? He, not, he has now put his word in their mouths. And now they are not saying what their parents taught them to say. They are now saying what God told them to say. Now, don't miss this. Don't miss the power. That, hey, I'm going somewhere. I'm almost done. So now when... Abram, whose name has been changed to Abraham, calls Sariah, whose name has been changed to Sarah, and he says, good morning, Sarah. He is now saying, good morning, mother of princes and kings. <laughs> when Sarah calls Abraham, instead of Abram, when he says, your breakfast is ready, Abraham, she says, your breakfast is ready, father of a multitude. What has God just done? He has just put his word in their mouths and they are now calling those things that be not as though they were. They are now speaking the word of God in faith. And if you read your Bible, woo, if you read your Bible, what didn't happen for the last 24 years now happens in less than a year. Are you there? Are, are you there? 
Oh my goodness. Look, mm, he changes the names and he goes on to say, now watch, watch verse number nine. And God said to Abraham, as for you, you shall keep my covenant, your descendants after you throughout my generations. This is my covenant with you. Every male shall be circumcised, verse 11, and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskin. This is a sign of the covenant between me and you. So he gives him, he says, as for Sarah, Sarai, your wife, her name shall no longer be Sarai, but it shall be Sarah, and I will bless her and give you a son by her. Then I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations, kings, and people shall be born from her. Watch verse 17. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, shall a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? And shall Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? And Abraham said to God, oh, that Ishmael might live before you. Then God said, no, Sarah, your wife shall bear you a son, and you shall call his name Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendants after him. Watch this. As for Ishmael, I've heard you. Look at verse 21. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac whom Sarah shall bear to you at this time next year, which means what hadn't happened for 24 years was now going to happen within the next nine months. What changed? What they were saying. They began releasing their faith by speaking God's word, and that was one of the things that helped them get to Jehovah Jireh. That's right, Marsha. It is voice activated and it is voice activated with the word of God. Hear me. You will never come into the place Jehovah Jireh until you learn to say what God has said. He has said, all your need is met. He has said, the young lion shall lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want for any good thing. He said, as long as Hezekiah sought me, I caused Hezekiah to prosper. He said, it is my will above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. He said, all things are yours, whether things present or things uh, uh, to come, all are yours. That's what he said. Now, here's the question. What do you say? Because it's what you and I say and act on, thank you, Master, <laughs> that causes us to get to the place Jehovah Jireh. Now, now, don't get me wrong. It wasn't just saying alone. I mean, Abraham and Sarah had to do something. You understand? It wasn't just speaking words. A lot of people say, oh, I speak the word. No, no, no. You got to speak the word, then you got to act <laughs> on what you have spoken. You understand? You got to do what God has said to do. And it was that separation, revelation, speaking God's word that got Abram to the place, Jehovah Jireh, where he heard what God said in a specific moment and acted on it. And that action, God said, because you have done this thing. Now I'm telling you, as a prophet of God, that the spirit of the Lord has sent me to some people in this season because God has purposed to bring his church, his ecclesia, his remnant to the place Jehovah Jireh. And the spirit of the Lord said to me in the course of this declaration, he said, I'm sending you to two hundred people that I'm going to instruct you to instruct them to sow a seed of $500 into this word, into this anointing, and into this ministry. Now, don't miss what I'm getting ready to say here. For many of you, you are breaking into the place, Jehovah Jireh, in this season. This is your season to break in. I know what I'm saying by the spirit of God. And because I have ministered the word of God to you 
and release this anointing. So you need to understand it's significant to sow into a word and into an anointing when you hear, I teach this to our people uh, at the place of Grace Cosmopolitan Center. It's one of the reasons so many of them have come to a place of breakthrough and come to a place of prosperity. Um, and I want you, I want you to pull it up uh, because this is something uh, uh, that many people. Uh, uh, this is something that many people don't, who they don't connect and they don't understand, but I'm going to share it with you because I know the significance of this moment. It's in Galatians chapter six and verse number six. It says, let him who is taught in the word share, communicate, respond in all good things with him who teaches. Now watch this. So this is not for me. I'm, none of this is going to be, watch this. Verse number seven, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows that shall reap. Now, what did he just say? See, a lot of people use this where, well, you know, you're going to reap what you sow. What did he just say? He said, let him who is taught in the word share or respond or communicate in all good things with him that teaches. I'm about to share something with you that will change your life forever if you'll hear it. And then he says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows that shall he also reap. Now watch what he just, what did he just tell you to do? He just said, when you're taught in the word, you're to sow or you're to give into the one who has taught you the word. Now watch this. That does, that's not me. This is going to be clarified. Watch this. And then he says, don't be deceived. You can't disregard what I just said to you and reap the way you're supposed to reap. Watch this. For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life or Ioneos Zoe. Now there he's not talking about being saved or being born again because nothing you sow or give causes you to be born again. He's speaking in the context of let him who is taught in the word share or communicate with him who teaches. And then he says, don't be deceived. You can't disregard what I just told you about sowing into the word and continue to reap. He says, he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. In other words, he who gives to the flesh, to the natural, to the individual will not reap the way they're supposed to, but he who sows to the spirit, capital S, will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Now, what does he just say? See, the Holy Spirit is the great teacher. That's why when God sends you a word, you're not giving to a man. You're not giving to a ministry. You are sowing in to the teacher, the spirit of God who brought the word to you, who released the, see, Jesus said the Holy Spirit is the teacher. And any man or God, or a woman of God who's worth their salt, who teaches anything from God, it's the Holy Spirit ministering through them. Now notice what Paul says. When you recognize the Holy Spirit is the one teaching you, when you are taught by him, he says, so into that anointing, so into the one who teaches, who's not the vessel, it's the Holy Spirit. And he said, if you, if you are looking at the flesh, you'll disregard this. But if you are looking at the spirit, you will sow to the spirit and you will of the spirit reap everlasting life. That doesn't mean salvation there. It is the Greek, Ioneos Zoe. It means unstoppable life or life that cannot be extinguished or life that cannot be put out. Here's what the apostle Paul by the Holy Spirit is teaching. That when a word comes to you by the Holy Spirit and you sow into that word, the life that is in that word, when you sow into it, you will begin to reap Ioneos Zoe. The life that is in that word will begin to flow into your being into your circumstances, into your situations. Remember, in Mark chapter 4, Jesus taught that Satan comes immediately to steal the word that is sown out of the heart. And the Spirit of God showed me years ago, this is one of the ways you protect. It, it, it puts a dome, if you will, a protective dome, a spiritual shield around the word that's been sown to you and causes the life of that word to continue to flow. This is why Many people in the same ministry, in the same church can hear the same word. One person 
treats it like any, just, you know, oh, that was great. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, another person sows into that word and miracles start happening for them. Same church, same ministry. What's the difference? The soil, the revelation, the understanding. Watch. He says, well, he who sows to his flesh, what is sowing to his flesh? I mean, he's not talking about sending with the flesh. He's talking about disregarding what I just told you about sowing into the word you've heard. If you do that, the word will not produce the way it's supposed to. He says, but he who sows to the spirit will the spirit leap, reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary while doing what is good. Let us not be weary while doing this for in due season, we will reap if we do not <laughs> lose heart. Oh, I wish I had time to teach the rest of that. I don't. There are some of you that the spirit of God is directing to sow into this word. And the, uh, and the life of this word is going to continue to produce in you because this is your season of getting to the place, Jehovah Jireh. I want you right now, I want you right now to do two things. Number one, I want you to sow. I want the 200 of you that the spirit of the Lord has spoken to, to sow that $500 seed. I want you to do it. I want you to do it in faith, believing God. You say, that's not you. Again, more than 200 people are hearing this. More than 200 people are watching this. So if you're not, it, it's very possible you are not one of those. And if you're not, then I want you to get the very best seed you can and sow into it. Sow into, if it's $100 seed, 50, if it's five cents, if you do what the spirit of God is telling you to do, the Bible says, if there first be a willing heart, it is accepted, not according to what a man has not, but according to what he has. So whatever God is speaking to you to do, you do it. And the same blessing, thank you, Master, will come if you're honest with God, because that's your level of giving. I'm not here to raise money. I'm here to get the word out. But the Bible teaches when the word is sown, those to whom the word is sown are to communicate. And I'll never stop doing that. I'll, I'll never, I don't care who likes me, doesn't like me, doesn't matter. I have a responsibility from God to help bring his people into places of revelation. Here's Anna. I have seen your prophecies come to pass for many decades, Bishop. So keep aligning yourself to the use of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Annette. Please keep praying for me. I am going to do it by the grace of Almighty God. And I want you to make sure today that you, along with Annette, come into agreement with this word. Whatever God is telling you to do, you may not be one of those $500. So you may be one. God may have spoken to somebody here. And actually, I'm sure he did speak to somebody here to sow a $1,000 seed. Because he, and when I was in prayer this morning, I sensed God was speaking to, would speak to somebody today in that regard. And it may not be even here because people are giving into this ministry all day, every day, because I got my angels out on assignment. You understand? And so I want you to understand that in this moment, if the word of God has come to you, I may not be sent to everyone, but I am to you in this moment. And if you will act on the word of God, something supernatural is going to happen on the other side of your believing. You say, Bishop, how can you say that? Because I can read and I know how God gets things done in the earth. So right now, right where you are, I want you to sow. You can uh, click the donate button on your smartphone on your computer screen and so as the spirit of god directs you or you can text c-e-m-m -M to 41444 just follow the prompts and give as god has directed you as god has prospered you as you are inspired to give if you're one of those people sowing at that level it's important because the spirit of god said to me there were people that i would be speaking and prophesying to over these days that he is bringing into the place Jehovah Jireh. And hey, if you don't want to get there, that's fine. No, no stress, no pressure. But I'm sent to some people for whom that is God's purpose and destiny for them. And you need to sow. You can text, give CEMM to 41444. You can call the number 310-323-2600. Give my prayer minister some work to do. They're waiting for you. They are always ready to agree. I've got some of the greatest prayer ministers on planet Earth. I mean, they agree, they pray, they are 
they are live and functioning whenever I'm live and functioning. And so 310-323-2600, if you've got a prayer request, a prayer need, whether you're sowing anything or not, call. But I encourage you to sow your seed, mix your faith and your giving. 310-323-2600. If you've got the Bishop McClendon app, you can give that way. That's an easy way to give. But however you do it, I want you to do it in faith. And I want you to be expecting, expecting to receive from the Lord. God has many ways of getting to you what you need. I want you to be open. I hear that in my spirit. I want you to be open to every way that God has to bless you because he's not limited. Hallelujah. He can manifest the money. He can cancel the debt. He can give you favor. He can do all three at once. The Bible says he'll make all grace abound towards you. See, there's a grace harvest too on a seed. So not just financial. Woo. I have to teach on that one day soon. Now listen, listen to me and hear me very clearly. As the spirit of God directs you, I want you to, so, and if you've got questions, I want you to send them in to me because I'm going to, I'm going to respond to these questions. I'm going to, next time we're live, I'm going to spend some time responding to the questions on the things I've taught, on the things I've taught, but I'm going to respond to them. I'm going to pray for you. Hey, I'm talking to you. If somebody, and see, I, this comes up in my spirit from time to time. There's somebody watching me and say, well, I don't know if I'm supposed to give or not. If he says it one more time, I'll know it's me. Okay, this one is for you. You need to act on the word God gave you. If he gave it to you through me, act on it. If he spoke to you independent of me, act on it. But you need to do it. I'm getting ready to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, Lord, you ministered to me that you were bringing your people to the place, Jehovah Jireh. You spoke to me about financial breakthrough in this season. You said to me very clearly that divine prosperity is going to be one of the great evangelism tools of the end time harvest ecclesia, the church. And so I pray now in Jesus' name that my brother, my sister, their household, their family, their goods, and all that is connected to them prospers, is supernaturally protected. And I pray that you bring your people into the place, Jehovah Jireh, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. This is the prophet Bishop McClendon with the eyes of the watchman, and I'll see you by the grace of God next time. Bye-bye.